Hello. Hi. Good morning, society. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Perfect. This is the name perfect. of the show. Yeah, this is the name of the show. Good morning, society. I'm Becca Scott. I'm Ruel Gaviola. And we're going to tell you about some games today. Yeah, and we got our mugs. Um, As always. What do you have in your mug today? Becca? I have decaf coffee in my mug. Nice. What do you have in your mug? I have a lemon sparkling water. Ooh, Ooh. classy. Bubbly. <laughs> What do you guys have in your mugs? Let us know in the comments slash chat. And look, I'm just going to jump right into it. You can get your Good Morning Society mug at shop.goodtimesociety.com. I've been sneaking new stuff into the shop. Oh, really? Just for me, literally this morning, I made a One More Game crop top. Yes, nice. <laughs> and I made a Raise for the People One More Game t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> for the people, I love it. Uh, yes. Yeah, Ray wanted the shirt, uh, but he said it's not for me, it's for the people, so it's the Raise for the People for the One people. More Game t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> the People's Gamer. Uh, yeah, we got lots of things for the People's Gamers today. Uh, as always, Rel is going to walk me through Every game the internet has to offer. How there are always new games every Wednesday, I don't understand. It's the internet, Becca. I love the internet. <laughs> no, I don't. I love this corner of the internet that we share with you. Same. It is the best corner of the internet, at least for the next hour. Yeah. Um, let's give him a little more of a preview of what's to come. You're going to show me your travel bag. Yeah, I've got a travel bag full of games, so we're going to um, take. That's a, a little preview, folks. So that's going to happen later in the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's just let's just give them a preview. Yep. Um, we have an unboxing, of course, which is why there's a game sitting here. I won't even say a word about what game it is, but you could <laughs> use your peepers and figure it out. Um, peepers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I got two peepers here. I use a, use a and I've got four peepers. I've got oh, you four do. peepers. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And and then um, there might be a little uh, little game action happening yeah. live and in person. Yeah. Just a little one. Little Just cutie. a little one. Yeah. We did this last week um, where we match up in the morning and play a, a quick game. Um, Again, this is all preview for later on in the show, folks. Um, we're going to be talking about a bunch of new games that we're excited about, uh, new stuff that's out right now, new stuff that's coming out real soon on crowdfunding. And actually, one of them literally just crowd started crowdfunding like five minutes ago. So the hottest of the hot, folks, and the newest of the new right yeah. here on GMS. GMS. This is... Everything can be a chant and everything can be a shirt. <laughs> Save some peepers for the rest of us. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Nightcat. Um, Dune Traveler. Okay, uh, what was the thing I was going to say that is so important? Nope, it was that this is a big Kickstarter week. There was like four things that debuted yesterday that... We had a hand in um, sneaking a peek at early yep. and another today, so... Should we just jump right into it? Let's do it, yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Um, so we're going to look at, what are we going to look at? What I think we should look at Decorum first. Yeah. Now, shout out to one of the sponsors of our show today, Floodgate Games. Yes. And Decorum is a party game of passive aggressive cohabitation. Yes, I love this, Becca. So as you can see here in the setup, uh, all players are going to have like a secret mission, basically. And there's our home. And you and your roommates are trying to decorate the home in the way that you want to be decorated. And what's fun, the passive aggressiveness in this game, folks, is real. Like, if Becca put that lamp there, the yellow lamp uh, right there on the desk. I love how slow-mo that placement is. Isn't was. that great? <laughs> um, I can't actually say that I need it somewhere else. I can say, huh, Becca, I really don't like where that goes. Or you can say, love it. That's perfect. Don't move it. So that's the passive aggressiveness. And uh, the moving out expansion takes it to the next level. It adds new missions, adds new things. It act actually adds bubble wrap to the whole thing. Yes. You're moving. What? Yeah. So, yeah, a really, really fun game. I'm so excited about this theme. I love yeah. when a theme just perfectly is the mechanic. Yep. And this is brilliant. How has no one ever thought of this brilliant theme before? <laughs> I am that roommate that rearranges the entire house while you're out. Okay. And so this makes a lot of sense to me. You'll be that roommate in this game, Becca. That's totally you. You're you know, gonna say you're gonna be moving the picture frames, you're gonna be moving um, the uh, vase and the, the lights and whatnot. Yes. And then you're Fellow players may not like that. Uh-oh. 
they'll know. learn to live with it or they'll move out. <laughs> <laughs> and that is perfect. That is decorum with the moving out expansion coming real soon from our friends at Floodgate Games. Uh, we will have a copy of this soon. And yes. when we do, we'll actually unbox that for you as well. But yeah. we were too excited to show it off in this beautiful video. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to pop that so open. Good. Yeah, Maybe it, we'll even play around. Yeah, that would be great. I, I would love that. I think it, it would be really funny with you, just knowing that you're that roommate, and we will see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I am who I am. <laughs> yes, and we love you for it, Becca. Oh. Hey, um, you want to unbox something real quick? We have this game right here. I know this game. Yeah. I love this game. I'm really excited about this. I have not played it yet, but hey, I just saw a video on the Good Time Society YouTube channel. Oh, did you? Yes, and folks, if you have to, seriously, it is fantastic. And yes, maybe I'm biased and whatnot, but no, it's really good. Well, I'm really excited about the video that we just put up. It's a playthrough video of Word Traveler. We have Josephine McAdam, Whitney Moore, and my friend Chris Grace, who is who's introduced me to Blood on the Clock Tower. And uh -oh. um, what I'm so excited about with this video is that I've been wanting to do player confessional style for so long and we finally did it with this video and I think it's very funny. It's one of those where, let me just describe the game um, and then yeah. you can check it out. But anytime someone has to keep a foot poker face, it's always fun to cut to seeing what they were actually thinking. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was very fun to shoot. But Word Traveler is a fabulous game from Office Dog. They're under the Asmodee banner mm -hmm. and they're a new game company but with a bunch of old hat people in the industry it's for two to five players it plays in 30 to 45 minutes in ages 10 and up and it comes with some stickers, stickers. it comes with guidebooks to the four cities cities oh on the map and let me show you the boards this one's New York City. So the way that it plays is sort of like um, a movement programming game. You know, when you decide what the movement should be ahead of time, and then some of these games you kind of have a timer, not in this one. The In this one, you're simultaneously um, choosing locations uh, based on your little passport card. Oh. So each player will have a beautiful little passport. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And inside of the passport goes a, ca uh, a card that is matching the map board. Where are the cards? Here they are, down underneath the passports. Um, so uh, you'll put this in north, south, east, and west, matching the one uh, that is public information to everyone. Very cool. And what I am trying to do is I'm trying to get my teammates, because it's cooperative, and don't run away if you're like <laughs> me, and that word is sometimes anathema. This is uh, hits the high barrier for me of cooperative games. Mm -hmm. It is just an absolute joy to play. So what you're doing is you're starting in the middle, and this one's of New York City. You're going three directions, so maybe I start north and then I go east and then I go south and I'm gonna try and get my teammates to stop on three of the pips on my matching map and the way I'm going to do that is I have an assortment of words that are like trouble not trouble okay. eclectic not eclectic so maybe I want them to stop at oh why did I close it <laughs> at uh, at uh, this Van Gogh Starry Night. So I'm gonna say Van Gogh Starry Night is eclectic. And of course, famously cut off his ear, he is trouble. Uh, nothing says trouble like cutting off your ear. Right? <laughs> um, and so then my teammates will know that I have decided the first direction is north okay. and starting from the starting point. So they'll have to look at these three pictures and decide which one is eclectic trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So I think a museum docent, not so much. This beautiful bridge that probably has a name, uh, Central Park maybe, yeah. not so much. So they might just know it's Van Gogh. And uh, then that's the sort of, yeah, that's the secret information. You keep a poker face as your teammates are figuring out where you want to go. And then you go through everyone and um, collect points along the way. It's so much fun to play. Yeah. And, and you can find our playthrough video. There's also these delightful, uh, it's just for flavor, but there is a guidebook for every item, every stop on oh. that map. And the four maps you get uh, in this starting box are New York City and Paris, 
and then Tokyo and London. And uh, they're all real things that have significance in that city that are locations or just things commonly seen, oh, etc. Yeah. Like, of course, Paris has baguette. Yeah. France produces six million baguettes every year. And, Do you got any uh, good facts? Yeah, Tokyo, the Shibuya Crossing. That's yeah. the famous crossing where everyone, there are like thousands of people. Um, there's also a pigeon, which I didn't know was. I didn't know <laughs> that local could probably go on all these maps. Yeah, Tokyo Skytree. I've actually been there. Me too. A vending machine. I know the vending machines in Tokyo next level. Yeah, they got so cool. Like fresh cooked food in a vending machine. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, this, this looks. I, I can't wait to try this. This one looks so good. And again, watch that video, folks. It, it's so funny. It's so cool to see. And um, yeah, word travel, fantastic looking game. Yeah, I love it. Thanks so much to Office Dog. Uh, that also, um, they did sponsor the playthrough video, but we're just covering it here because I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah. I so, can't wait to try that. I would love to play with you. Yeah, let's play. Um, speaking of games, we got tons of games that are out now and coming out real soon and just released. So why don't we jump into that, Becca? Yeah, let's do it. And also, uh, the box part was denied. I know for the ASMR people oh, okay. in the chat, they're going to want... There you go. There you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> first game we're talking about is Rebuilding Chicago. And this one, I'm ecstatic about this uh, because I... Uh, last year, uh, Rebuilding Seattle was the first one in this series. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite games of last year. And that Rebuilding Seattle, we still need to play that back. We weren't able to play it. I played it with Jake. Uh, we loved it. It's a tile-laying game about building a city. Uh, you had me a tile-laying. Exactly. And uh, what, what's neat is, uh, so Rebuilding Chicago is a retheme, and there's some new things in, included in it. Uh, basically, you're taking the tiles to build your neighborhoods, and those tiles have, like, you know, museums, restaurants, and whatnot. And as you place them into your neighborhood, they're going to generate income, and you want to, you know, more income to get more buildings. But at the same time, there's a population me mechanism. You want people to come to your uh, neighborhood, but you got to be careful because if it's too many people, they're going to use up too many resources. You're going to start losing points. So it's Ooh. a really nice balancing act. And Chicago, I'm sure, is it's going to uh, again. It's just been announced. Um, I'm excited about it because I got to visit Chicago for the first time recently, and. That city is amazing. Have you been to you Chicago? You went to it for the first time? For the first time ever. Oh my gosh, did you eat a big hot dog? I did, I had hot Matt, dog. Matt is clapping, Matt is Matt. we went to school in Chicago. <laughs> Congratulations Pugs. to Matt Pugs. and Joelle. <laughs> yeah, get in there, it's a small frame. Yes. Um, I have been to Chicago many times, my sister went to school there. Oh, did she really? Okay, yeah, yeah nice. And I auditioned for a, a master's degree program in acting in Chicago. Whoa. I didn't go to any of them, but I did audition for them wow. it was cold Ertus. <laughs> <laughs> nice I yeah I was first time ever oh, so uh, before Gen Con last year Michelle and I we were celebrating an anniversary mm. and we said let's do something a little different and we are at the time watching the show the bear love the bear yes yeah we totally got obsessed with the bear Chicago's in Chicago's best yes so of course we went to Chicago for our trip and um, Got to go to the actual Mr. Beef, where the bear is based on. Yes, and it's, beef. It's so weird to walk in there because it's literally that's that's the set. I mean, it's it's they the just, exact same thing. Oh man! Yeah. So they're shooting in a very small location. It is. That's yeah. tight back there. Yeah, and the sandwich is so good. This has nothing to do with games, but oh, yeah. it, everything to do with Chicago. There is an episode in season one that is a oneer, which is, in my opinion the most impressive thing in filmmaking that you could do. You don't cut, or if you do cut, you mask it with the camera turning so uh -huh. well that it looks like you didn't cut. And there is a entire episode that is one shot. What episode was that? Do you remember? It was in the middle of the season, and uh -huh. You'll just probably remember the feeling of tension in your gut, okay. and maybe someone's gut gets <clears throat> impaled. Um, oh, that episode! It it it, it you're, it's building tension because sometimes you can cut the tension with cutting a scene. Yeah, yeah. And this whole time, I'm getting anxious just thinking about oh it. But it was gosh. so impressively done wow. to make you feel what it feels like to work in a kitchen, which I have worked at a bunch of restaurants in front of house. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Nice. It's, it's real. It's I need, real. Now I want to watch it. Well, I know that they have a new season coming up. Um, is it later this year? So I need to rewatch that episode. I did not know. Great show. Yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, that's Rebuilding Chicago. That'll be out uh, from our friends at WizKids Games um, later on this year or early next year. To put you entirely on the spot, can yeah. we see like a little bit of um, Rebuilding Seattle 
And I just want to yes. see kind of what the the play, like if there's a, a video that we can click through. Oh yeah, I just want to see a little bit of the table yeah. presence so of it. So here's your player board right here. Uh, um, you're keeping track of your resources there on the little player board. Ooh, on the left yeah. side there, you have your landmarks that you've built. You have some of the buildings. And uh, let me see, let's go over here. Uh, these are, there's your tiles, the polyomino tiles, as we like to call them. In Wait, the, what does polyomino mean? Polyomino means, I just call it Tetris style pieces. Tetris. Yeah, look at Tetris. Okay. And as you uh, place your buildings there, the ones that are connected, so the blue ones I think are, well, I forget what the blue ones are, but um, you connect the different colors and you're going to uh, create. Different categories. Exactly. Uh, income, that generates income, but they also bring in population because you know, of course, when your neighborhood prospers, then people want to go there. Yeah. And you have to balance the whole, hey, make sure everyone's got a place to stay, so people have uh, money to generate, and um, that'll lead to your victory points. Um, it's a really cool game. Here's the board where you're going to select the buildings that you want. It looks like a lot, but really it isn't. Um, those are just different spaces like, hey, this is cost $3, this one costs $5, and you get bonuses uh, based on the cards that you're going to build. It's only played over three rounds. It's like a 60-minute game, Becca, and I love these type of games oh, no. that give you lots Limited of... Limited rounds? Yeah. Ah. Like, that's it. It's like 60 minutes. It's so tight, um, but oh, it's fantastic. Okay, okay. One of my favorites of last year, folks. Check uh, it out. Yeah, I really want to check it out. Also, maybe if we're rebuilding Chicago, they'll do a player board that has a little double cardboard insert because I'm always so petrified of knocking my cubes around. Yeah. Just a pitch. It's, Just a pitch. I'm I, sure it's already in production. It, Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love like all the deluxe components. Yeah, that's my stretch goal yeah. that I am giving for them that call it Becca's stretch goal. <laughs> yeah. Even though game's in production already, we're going to give you stretch goals. First. Sorry. <laughs> that's how we roll. Uh, speaking of rolling, let's roll on over to Fromage. Cheese! Cheese! I had to pick this game just because I love cheese. It's a food game it's, you know is in Ruel's list. Yeah, and look at that. It's got, are those little cow meeples or sheep meeples or whatever? Oh, look both. I see a right? sheep. I see a calf maybe or a goat. Yeah. Maybe a goat. Ooh, goat cheese. Yeah, goat cheese. So you are making cheese in this game. It is a, a worker placement game, and um, you're going to go around making different cheeses, <laughs> artisanal cheeses. Hold on. Ray just said, wake up, sheep meeples. I think you mean sheeples. Sheeples. That's yeah. already a thing. <laughs> It's a thing. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. So you're going to make the different cheeses. There's your uh, car to transport your cheeses all around uh, France. Um, this is early 20th century, from my, I believe, is what they said. And as you can see, you're going to go to the different parts of France. Hey, look, different cheeses. And, uh, I don't know if I would eat that dark green cheese. Yeah, that one might be a little uh, old. Um, <laughs> But isn't that a, but a good some thing? Cheese, cheese? It's just well aged yeah. to some. And here are some of the buildings that you're going to build for uh, the cheese. What's really cool is I'm trying to find a picture of it. Where is it? It has a rotating board. Ooh. There it is. So that's going to determine where you're going to deliver all the great cheeses you make, Becca. And you know, after every turn, you rotate. It's like, oh, can I deliver these cheeses here or whatnot? And oh, if you yeah. do. You will increase the prestige of your cheese making operation. I'm very satisfied by the size of the table that this round board is on. It's Isn't it perfect? Complimentary. Everything yes. looks like a wheel of cheese. Mm -hmm. That is great for me. Yeah. So that is fromage, and that'll be coming out uh, later this year. Who, who, who's the producer of this game? Uh, publisher? The producer of the game is, I click on this button right here, and it's going to tell me it is. Uh, Road, to Road to Infamy. Okay. Yeah, there it is. I the don't know much about videos. them, yeah. Uh, the designers are Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossett. If you're familiar with those names, folks, last year they came out with a terrific deduction game called Search for Lost Species, uh, which was the re-implementation of Search for Planet X. I don't like deduction games. I love the, that game. I love deduction games. Yes. I, I do like Search for Planet X. I do too. Yeah, okay. So I like it because... If you wanted to improve upon an already good game, I'm sure it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, Search for Planet X. I liked it, Becca, because you get a little notebook and it made you feel like a scientist, but even though I don't know anything about science. Or like Steve from Blue's Clues. Yeah. <laughs> Blues Clues, folks. You know, a scientist. <laughs> scientist. Uh, so that's fromage for our friends over there at um, Road to Infamy Games. Positing a theory, was Steve from Blues Clues a noir detective? Oh. All he needs is a fedora, you know? <laughs> clues in it's, a notebook. What is it about a fedora? Is it, it's just, that's just the thing well, they did. Well, that's where the you hide the clues. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dr. So. Steve Clue. <laughs> Speaking of nice, we've got a nice one coming up, a really nice one uh, that I'm stoked about. Uh, Ironwood, it is a one to two player game from our friends at Mind Clash Games. Mind Clash Games, they put out some of the heaviest games I've played. Yeah. Right? Uh, Anachrony, Tricarion. Oh, oh some, Tricarion is a sick game. That game is sick. Love it's basically, yeah, the prestige in board game form, folks. I love <laughs> that game, but it gives me a headache anytime I play it. Uh, but Ironwood, this is Mind Clash's sort of, hey, we're going to start trying to get more people in our game. So this is a 30 to 60 minute game rather than like a multi-hour game. It's for one to two players. So the complexity level is going to be a lot more approachable for players. Um, it is a, a one to two fighting game. You're going to you know do combat, you alternate turns, and last player standing wins. Oh, yeah. Let's see some of these pictures. Look at this That's some artwork. really beautiful art. Yeah. And yeah. Mind Clash, their components and their artwork is always like top notch. Yeah, actually, so I know they're really known for Anachrony and all of its expansions and heavier games. Mm -hmm. The game that we have done a tutorial for is called Astra, and it's actually oh, a yeah. really low weight game. Nice. Um, it's all about constellations, and you use a dry erase marker to take turns um, claiming constellations, and if you place the last, uh, like connect the dots of the constellation, you get to keep the card. Oh, very cool. It's really beautiful. Nice. And it is, they have done a great job with a lighter game. So yeah. I would trust them with both light and heavy. And this looks somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And I, I love that. It's uh, got asymmetric factions and whatnot. So it's going to be, it's a little step up from say like a gateway game. Uh, but it's still got that mind clash. Hey, there's a bunch of stuff you can do. We're just going to streamline it down a little bit for y'all. So that's very approachable. Very, very cool. So that is Ironwood from Mind Clash Games coming out real soon. Ooh, okay. soon we love. Uh, we have something here that it's a game for, that I think has brought a lot of us into the hobby. Mm -hmm. You may have heard about it, folks. It's a game called Munchkin. Now, Munchkin! Munchkin, this is the big box edition that is going to go to Kickstarter tomorrow. Like, it's not even out yet. Like, it's going tomorrow. There's a preview of the box. Again, not all the art is final. Um, there is, is that a board game shelf of only Munchkin games? Uh, no, that's uh, Ruel spoiling the uh -oh. shelf version of the show for later. Uh-oh, sneak peek. For sneak peek. Uh, there's, uh, you, this edition is going to have all, like, I don't know, like tons of expansions. They say it's going to have over 650 cards with a bunch of brand new ones. Serious. The box itself is going to hold over 2,000 cards. So, Munchkin fans, this is for you. This is the jam. It's I wonder if you can reorganize your old Munchkin games with various IP into this big box. Yeah. Um, included in this big box are dividers. So, <laughs> illustrated dividers. So, you can divide all those things into all the different uh, ways you want to divide them into. It's got dice. It's got uh, kilometers. I guess that's uh, to track the, the hit points and whatnot. Kilometers. And, yeah, kilometers. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Got the pun. Nice. <laughs> um, and I, I've played Munchkin once. I've I played it many many years ago when I first got into the hobby. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's one of the a classic. It, yeah, it is a classic for a reason. It's gotten again, you you in your journey of gaming, you start at a certain point and then you move on, and you know. I, I think Munchkin has really done a lot for the hobby as far as, hey, yeah. here's something that is really easy to pick up. You play it, you get into it, and then maybe you collect them all or maybe you move on. But this one, for all of the collectors, this is, this is the jam for y'all. And, you know, if you like to pick up a game with your favorite IP, Munchkin probably has probably that has too. It. Yes. Actually, the one video we did on Good Time Society was the Critical Role Munchkin. Oh, that yeah. Was very fun. Yeah. yeah. Good times. And, yeah, I, I can see Munchkin. I, it's, it's an evergreen title. It's always going to be around. Um, they'll always adapt it to the latest hot IPs. So, very cool. Want to thank Steve Jackson Games for letting us preview that. And uh, speaking of previews, uh, this one. This it is... wouldn't be a Ruel transition without speaking of exactly. something else. That's, I'm trying to do it for every single one. <laughs> I love it. Never <laughs> stop. Can we get a shirt? Speaking of shirts. <laughs> speaking of shirts. <laughs> um, this one just launched. Uh, Ruel. Ray's, Ray's got a face like, now we're going my collection. <laughs> this man is a Kickstarter completionist, and yeah. that goes for t-shirts too. <laughs> uh, this is the 2025 Board Game Mosaic Calendar. It's not even a game, Becca. It's a calendar. I actually have the 2024 one. These oh. are This is beautiful. You should have brought it in. I totally forgot to. Um, <laughs> look at this calendar. So this image. My heart stopped a little. These I are, my mic. These are beautiful. 
These are made of board game components. So um, the artist takes a photo and then recreates it using board game co components. As you can see here, the the sun and the the uh, palm tree there, those are actual components from actual games. I believe her art, her name is Katya Hawatson. Yes, she's oh, great. Wow. And we're gonna scroll down here and show you some of the images. Um, look, There's a time lapse video. Can we watch the time lapse? Where'd it go? Did I see the? There it is. Um, wait, wait. Time lapse. Under yeah, that's the one. Okay, here we go. Oh, I love a time lapse. Time lapse. Uh, how do I make this bigger? That's the question, isn't it? What? Okay, here it is. No. It's okay. It's I can a, see it. Okay. Can I you love see it? it just this size. Oh. Yeah, there she goes. Yeah, it's a ton of work to do this. Um, I watched. No, but she does it so fast. Yeah, <laughs> she's doing it like thirty seconds. Uh, she actually sketches out what she wants to do first, and then she'll get the components um, and create. Oh, what was it? You mean it's she like doesn't just do this freehand? Yeah. <laughs> that was in the game she opened. Oh man. Look at this. This is incredible. Yeah. I, I know it takes her a long, long time to do this, and so she does this. It's 13 images, uh, to, uh, you know, for the uh, December through the next uh, year, and. I mean, I, it's uh, fantastic. look, I just want to back this because she's made $10,000 with the $7,000 goal, but like, how long does this take to do? Just, if this yeah. is months of your life, <laughs> right? <laughs> you should be making a, a, even more. Exactly. Go back this kick, Kickstarter. It's, it's really impressive. That's yeah. beautiful art in the world of gaming. Yeah. Oh, and thank you for sharing. Yeah, and I can totally attest to the quality of the calendar. It's a nice big calendar. What's cool is too, like, um, she, you know, has each uh, month, and then there's like little th uh, spaces where you can write your gaming goal for the month. Like, oh, this month you're gonna play five, you know, uh, million pick up and, games. Yeah, five million games or five specific games that you want to uh, write. It, it's really neat. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna use my line, but. <laughs> <laughs> you have a segue. Speaking of calendars. <laughs> Wait, but I just wanted to know. When I hang a, a wall calendar, I'm never actually using it as a calendar. I'm just looking at the pretty art. Do you use the wall calendar as a calendar? We are in the same boat, Becca. It's yeah. just all about the pretty art. It's, uh, yeah, no, that's just, that's yeah. just to remember what month it is. Yeah, yeah. I have three calendars uh, in the house, and not one of them is actually used for those purposes. Dwery has nailed what I would write in mine, which is, <laughs> destroy <laughs> Jake! Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Uh, speaking of calendars? Speaking of calendars, I've got another calendar for you. What? There's, More calendars? It's calendar time, apparently, uh, in the world of board games. I is... thought it would be January or December, but no, it turns out it's April. Yeah, <laughs> for 2025. 2025, we, okay, okay. The calendar of many adventures. Oh. Look at this. Uh, so the, each month has a map. And these maps are used for your 5e adventures. Okay. Yeah. So they're uh, different maps, and here's the artist, as you can see, going through them. And uh, each one, you get their full-on 5e PDF adventures written for the maps are included with the uh, calendar. Interesting. Yeah. And I see some loose maps on the table there. Mm -hmm. So it must include ones that you can take out and unfold. Yep. Ooh, yeah. interesting. Is this crowdfunded as well? It is. Uh, so their goal was five hundred dollars. They've raised seven thousand. Uh, Loke battle mats. Fifteen days left to go. Yeah, isn't that neat? And that's a backer kit one. Yep. Yeah, we're seeing more and more stuff on backer kit. I love it. Originally was just helping on the rollout mm -hmm. of rewards on stuff like. Uh, uh, what what am I thinking? Game found as Game well found. as Kickstarter, but now Backer Kit's doing their own stuff and yeah. is also a great place to find things. Exactly. So uh, that one is being backed now. So if you don't have, if you're like back into myself, you can get a bunch of calendars and just hang up on the walls and enjoy it. But this one's actually you know, very functional. You can uh, do, use it for your adventures. I want to see someone with just a wall of just calendars, <laughs> and that you just change the art every month. It's just like a variable art wall. Yeah. Is this a design tip? Should we put it in uh, decorum? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I'm going to rearrange. That'll be the next you're not looking. The yeah. next expansion. Yeah, decorum mm -hmm. calendar wall. Calendar walls. Yeah, calendar yeah. walls. Yeah. Everywhere you look. Something else for your discussion. Okay. Yeah. I Kickstarter, Becca Kit, and GameFound all mentioned. Did you guys see that yesterday? Wait, come talk to, in that God mic. And I mean, go over there. <laughs> go, go there. 
Hello, good time. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. <laughs> God. That's <laughs> mad, everybody. So <laughs> uh, yesterday, Kickstarter announced that they are adding late pledging to their platform. Oh. So it feels like they have, uh, they have seen what everyone else is beating them at. Yeah. Or, uh, mm-hmm. Advancing their own. It's almost like competition is good and monopoly is bad. Yeah. Wow. Seems that way. Yeah. Um, big fan of competition. Yeah. Makes things better. Wow, I did not know that they did that. Very thing. cool. Yeah. I thought, maybe I'm crazy, I thought that Kickstarter did have an option for late pledges that only some people chose to do. But am I, that's not the case? I don't think so. Yeah. I people, am, people in fact, send, crazy. People would link their Kickstarter campaigns to the fulfillment through backer kits. Yep. Pledging. Yeah. Oh, you could do late pledges through backer kit. Mmm, mm-hmm. competition good. Yep. Okay, I see it now. Monarchy <laughs> bad, competition good. Monarchy bad. He's well, like, no. not for the monarchs. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of monarchs, this has nothing to do with monarchs. But, okay. Um, speaking I'm of the opposite of monarchs. Yeah. Speaking of me using this transition every single time, <laughs> we've got Mage Knight, the Apocalypse Dragon. Now, Ooh. Mage Knight is a game that really makes me lose my stuff. It is a heavy Euro. Uh, deck building uh, uh, game. We can't have Ruel losing his stuff, people. It's, it's, oh no, destroy Mage Knight. Yes. I, <laughs> Is that what a, you meant? Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. It's a fantastic game, but uh, when you play it, know what you're getting into. Because the first time I played it, it was like sort of on my gaming bucket list. I was like, yeah, we can knock this out in like an hour or two. No. It was a like four hour game and we barely finished three players. I love a four hour game. I, I do too, but when I know I'm getting into that, right? Uh, but Mesa, it's brilliant. I actually end up playing a few more times after that. I absolutely love it. This is the first expansion in 10 years. It's a game that's been around forever. They do have another expansion or two. Uh, but this one, uh, people are just going uh, losing it uh, because they want to see the new characters. Uh, they have a new playable character, new enemies to fight, the four horsemen, and the fearsome Apocalypse Dragon, which is shown there. Uh, no video is out yet of it, but um, this will be coming out next year. It's a story-driven campaign mode. Hold on. So, the yeah. original was made by um, Vlada Shivadil, yes. who made I, code names. Yeah. He's got some of the widest range of games yeah. out there. Code names to Mage Knight. He's also done, I think, is it Dragon Pets and uh, a few others. He, he does them all, Becca. Galaxy Trucker. Galaxy Trucker, yeah. Yeah. Which is totally different than this game. Um, what else has he done? Does it say whatever? Uh, oh, gosh. I keep clicking away at the moment you ask. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. Bunny Bunny Moose Moose. No, that's 2009. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did he see. do Pulsar 2849? I think he did that. Great question. Yeah. I do not know because there's so many versions of code names that have been released uh, yeah. that all I know is Bunny Bunny Moose Moose. <laughs> so, yeah, Avado, he is uh, known for a wide range of games. And again, it's really cool to see um, Mage Knight coming back. Now, this Mage Knight uh, expansion is actually uh, another designer. So, th- he gave the blessing, like, hey, I'm working on the new version of code names apparently, so go uh, with my blessing, um, create this new expansion. It is Phil uh, Pettif- Pettifer, um is the designer of the expansion. So that'll be out next year, folks. If you're a Mage Knight fan, go check it out. Okay. You're looking for other stuff from that designer? What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got Space Alert. Space Alert. Have you ever messed with Space Alert? Yeah. Uh, Galaxy Trucker. Yes, uh-huh. classic. Dungeon Lords. Dungeon Lords, that's it. Uh, those are the. Lords. Those seem like the Prophecy, 2002's Prophecy. Okay. I don't I don't know that one, but those seem to be the highlights. And uh, Through the Ages, A Story of Civilization. Oh, mm-hmm. Another like super heavy three-hour Euro, folks. Uh, well, a civ building game, a classic. Yeah, so uh, check that out if you're into Mage Knight, folks. Uh, even if you're not, I, mean, I think it's a game worth trying because it's... But reserve four hours for play. Definitely. Yeah. Just got to have the time for it. Okay. That is an important thing. You need to, as you mentioned, know ahead of time so you can plan your sleep schedule accordingly exactly. and your start time. Yeah. Or, you know, like our Twilight Imperium games, we always um, build in snack breaks. Sandwich time. Sandwich yeah. time. Sandwich exactly. walk. See the sunshine in the yeah. middle of the day there. Exactly. Very important. Okay. Rolling right along or moving right along, we've got a game called Hamster Roll, which is not a heavy Euro game. Uh, this is a fun little um, out of print uh, dexterity game. And I, I had to include this because 25th Century Game is bringing this back, and it's literally like this hamster wheel. <laughs> and everyone has these uh, funky shaped uh, wood pieces, and the goal is to just put it on that wheel. The wheel will spin on the table, it'll move down. Sure, when you add weight. Exactly. 
and the first player to get rid of all their uh, wooden pieces wins. So if you ever knock down pieces, which will happen, you take those pieces so you have more pieces uh -huh. to play. It's a little bit of a... Um, Look at that. Uh, what is the word Jenga? Yes, Jenga-ish. But look at this. I, I was so surprised. Look at this. someone got their pieces. I don't know if they put glue or something. Can you see that? Oh that wow! Should, that's not Wait, real, so they're it? not magnetic. They're I just assumed magnetic. they were magnetic. Yeah, they're just wooden pieces. They're all different shapes. And I don't know. That was like magic. It looked like they wedged a piece that's like a seat belt on top. Yeah, yeah. So there are <laughs> other different pieces you're gonna place. And this game's been out of print for years, but. Everyone that I've talked to that's actually played it loved it. Oh, okay. So I'm looking forward to trying it. Uh, Fan fave. Is, yeah, the, this is Hamster Roll. 25th Century just picked it up, and they will be releasing it, I think, next, uh, either late this year or early next year. <laughs> hamster Roll. Oh, you don't want to wear a wooden seat belt? Well, <laughs> maybe the hamsters do. Exactly. The hamsters <laughs> with the seat belts. Um, let's wrap things up for the new stuff we're excited about, uh, Becca. Oh, one more game! One more one game! More one more game! game. And actually, it's not a game, and it's not even out yet. It's going to be released on GameFound tomorrow. It's but I said live. one more game! Yeah, oh, but this I'll is accept. used for games. <laughs> this just cracks me up. It's called Tiny Tables. Oh! These are, look at these, in fact, they're little tables to hold your components in. Oh, for components. These are for, so you put a table on a table. I understand now, and I'm with it, and I like it. I was like, why would I need this, Ruel? Please explain to look me. Look at this. But it, yes. It's, look, you can roll your dice on. Can I, mean, I tell you my favorite sorting components item that they're gonna have to compete with. Mm -hmm. um, there are these little felt trays with snaps in the corner that this guy named Ruel used to make. Hey, um, <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> I love those. Do you still have those? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Whether they're here or at my house, hard to say, but okay. they do get used whenever I find them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, we love those things. We have them too at, at the house. But I mean, look at this, they're little tables. That is so cute. I like that it seems to be variable. You can have yeah. them have separate sections when needed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it just cracked me up. Brilliant. Tiny tables. I want to know who decided this is what the campaign they needed to run. Right? I, uh, yeah. This is very just. So adorable, yep. so sweet. And for those of you with, you know, dioramas of your whole house, mm -hmm. now you have the perfect thing. You don't have to build your own. <laughs> Look, uh, there's so many tables on the table. Tables on tables on tables. <laughs> Just for, like, the convention booth, they really should make, you know, a tinier one to go on the tiny table on the tiny, yes. on the regular table. Yes. Yeah. And then they need, like, see, tiny see versions people. of the games. Themselves, like a tiny word traveler or a tiny decorum. I mean, unfortunately for them, they just really have opened a Pandora's box of needing <laughs> to make tinier and tinier tables and canes. Yes. But yeah. fortunately for us. Yeah, that, that totally cracked me up. So we had to share it. Uh, there's some of the things we're excited about, folks. And you know what's exciting, Becca? Vacation. Vacation, travel. And That's all I ever wanted. Yeah, so when you travel, do you bring games with you? Well, it depends if Jake's traveling as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Jake's traveling, I'm going to say, hey, Jake, here's Ruel's bag of travel. Oh, my gosh, in the perfectly uh, trending Trader Joe's bag? Yeah, folks, <laughs> if you'd like your own bag like this, uh, hit me up. These things go for like $100 on eBay, maybe. Did you get a big stash? Uh, no, I did not. But this one, it's been used by me, so maybe that'll add to the value. I don't know. Um, <laughs> $300, going once. Going once, going, going twice. twice. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> um, this is uh, full of uh, travel games that I really enjoy that I think are perfect for travel. They're smaller games, and um, they're quick to learn and quick to play. I like quick learn, quick play. Tiny yeah. tiny suitcase presents. Yes, look at this. Pixies. Pixies. This is the uh, newest one from, I think it's Bombix. We should mention that they just sent us this free copy. Yeah. Uh, this is a uh, card-based game uh, where you are going to be uh, doing some set collection and some, what is it called? Um, uh, a sp it's a spatial puzzle, basically. So you're going to shuffle I, these up. I feel like uh, doing some cute miniature photography and then coming up with the game later may have been how this came about. I mean, look how Maybe not, this but is. these yeah. it's pretty adorable. Super cute. Can I just uh, punch in on manually here? Is that okay, Ray? Oh, yeah. You upset? Follow Don't your upset. heart. Don't be upset. There. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you have your uh, little animals there and you're just... Oh my gosh, look at this one. <laughs> now they don't actually go like this, folks. You are gonna go one through nine. Um, you're going to, uh, whenever there's one that matches, you're gonna place it there and that means you're gonna be able to score that at the end of the round. 
the round ends when someone's gotten all nine. Um, obviously, this would be shuffled. We're matching no numbers? On numbers, correct. Oh. Yeah, and they give out, you know, different points and different abilities and whatnot. Plays in about 20, 25 minutes. It is really terrific, and again, the art is so adorbs. You know what game this is not that I'm thinking of? Set? Do you play set? Oh yeah, I know set. That's yeah. a travel staple for me. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And this is, it's a sim well, not, it's not similar to set, but uh, it's the same type of You're concept. matching. You're matching. It's a lot easier, exactly. I would say, and um, more adorable. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's Pixies. Again, we're going into the a bag of travel games. These are games that are super easy to travel with. Nothing's easier to travel with than a mint. Oh, box. I could use a mint. Yeah, yeah. That, thank you. Yeah, don't eat these, please. What? They're wooden mints. It is Mint Works. Um, I don't even know if I forget the company's name. I don't know if they're still in business or not. I, I just realized. Five Twenty Four Labs. Okay, Five Twenty Four Labs. Designed by Justin Blasky. Yeah. So all their games, uh, they have Mint Works. They have several in their line. They're all in mint uh, tins. And they really do look like Altoids. Um, I am a little upset yeah. that you told me not to eat this. Yeah, I mean, you could, but you may break some teeth when okay. you Okay. Uh, what this I is. I want to do that. Believe it or not, it's a worker placement game. What? You, you take your workers, uh, go on little spots, do the action, and then you're going to try to build these things in your little uh, tableau. And the first, it's a race to seven points. It's awesome. This I, is adorable. I never would have thought a worker placement game could fit in a mint box. Oh yeah. my gosh. Right? Now this is the perfect travel game. It is. Except it really is. they will fall all over the airplane floor. <laughs> yeah. So worker placement game plays in 15 minutes. It's fantastic. I but <laughs> Good luck. You might have to find it used if it is out of print. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, ju I just realized that. But hey. Hey. Here, but speaking of out of print, this is not out of print. Yeah. Speaking of not this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using it every time, folks. Herbaceous, <laughs> the pocket edition. Um, this is from Pencil First Games, a set collection game, card drafting game, where you're making a little herb garden, Becca. Oh, I all love the, that. All the little herbs. Ooh, you know, one of my favorite games is Succulent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really lovely. This would be a nice Ooh, cinnamon. little. Yeah, nice little co compliment to Succulent, actually. Um, you're going to be drafting cards, and as you draft them, you're trying to collect different sets to go into your little garden. And the sets are, um, let's see, here they are right here. You're going to be trying to collect, like this one here, uh, all the cards. Uh, uh, you would take all different herbs and place them here. Uh, this one's all the same herb there. This one's pairs of herbs. And uh, this is like the bonus uh, one here. This is all different, yeah. So as you take them, like as you draft them and you put them into here, that's the end of that. So you can no longer add uh, herbs to this one. So you're trying to collect them as many as possible because once you put something down, it's locked up. You know, the roots, they start growing together and they exactly. just get upset if yeah. you do that. So that's, these you shuffle up, I just wanted to show the artwork on each of them. They all have the absolutely. same back. Yep. So this is, and as you know, it's not shuffled because this is a brand new edition. I actually had another copy of this. On the way back from Gen Con two years ago, I was playing this solo on, the, on my um, airline tray, and the young gentleman next to me was curious. We started talking, and at the end of the flight, I gave it to him. That is so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I, a know, budding gamer. gamer. Yeah, totally. You can't say no. you got to yeah. spread the love. Yeah. So I told that story, and of course, um, Pencil First was kind enough to send me a new copy. Of That's it. very sweet. Yeah. So... A great game, uh, obviously, to play on your airline tray and to give, a, give make away. Make friends yes. with uh, the kids sitting next to you, for exactly. sure. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and he actually uh, subscribed to the Good Time Society channel. What? I, I told him about it, and uh, he subscribed right there on the plane. It was great. Oh, Wait, <laughs> he subscribed to our channel? Yeah, I was like, go Good Time Society, go find me, a, you know, all these different channels. So he subscribed, like, Rado's channel, my channel. This uh, wait, are you guys following? Did you subscribe to all the channels? Click make sure. now. Yeah. yeah. The kid on the airplane can do it, so can you. Exactly. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Okay, this one here. I got all, all these games. I, I don't so know. many so in many. one Trader Joe's bag. In one little bag. That's not a hat I have heard a lot about. Yeah, why don't we um, talk about that right now? I got excited. You were not going to do that next, and then and then I saw it. Yeah, that's not a hat, Becca. It's not a hat. Yeah, what th is it? This is such a funny game. It's sort of like, uh, I guess, telephone, where you're... You say something, and then you're going to flip this card over, and then you're going to pass it over um, to someone and say, that is a hat. And then you're either going to say, no, it's not, and flip it over, or yes, it is, and keep it face down and pass it, continually passing it around. 
So, yes, it is. Yeah, and then Jake would say, uh, okay, yeah, that's a hat. And then we just, you know, take a new one from the deck, pass it around, and eventually someone's going to say, stop you and say, that's not a hat or that's not a duck or whatever you said it is. And whoever, I think it's three, wins the game. It's silly. It's silly fun. It's way better hey, why, than you think. What's the impetus to pass or not pass? Um, because you're trying to get, I think it's, you're trying to collect three. Um, and if you're right, then you're going to keep it. If you're wrong, then you have to get another one or something like that. I totally forgot. Accept a gift or refuse a gift. Um, so, yeah, it's silly fun. And you'll see. It's one of those things. You've got to play it, folks. you just got to play it. Was it was on Grant Lyons' top 10 games that make me laugh out loud, it, I believe. Yeah, it is hilarious. And, yeah, Grant knows games, folks. So. Grant knows games. And Grant knows comedy. Yeah. In fact, has been able to synergize these two things in a wonderful way. He's, he's great. And, actually, he's got a show coming up, I think, this weekend up in San Francisco. So if you're up in San Francisco, folks, look for Grant Lyon. He's actually doing his board game comedy show. Oh. Uh, so it is board game focused. And just hearing uh, him captivate a room, I haven't actually seen his set live, but uh, I, I've seen that man tell a joke, and yeah. he's one of the funniest people around. He's truly talented. Yeah. Hey, here's Doomlings. Doomlings? Doomlings. It's a delightful card game about the end of the world. Ooh, yeah. love the end of the world. Yeah. we got to celebrate it, you know, <laughs> with adorableness. Yeah. So uh, this one, it, it's along the lines of, uh, say, like an exploding kitten style game, uh, really easy to pick up, and you just you play rounds until there's a certain point threshold. But there's a little more going on. You are going to be grabbing all these trait cards. Uh, your traits here, like bad, voracious, cold blood. I'm not bad. Yeah. I'm just drawn that just way. Just drawn that way. And uh, you're going to play until the end of the world, which are in these ages cards here. So as you turn these over, you it'll say what uh, happens. Hey, it's a glacial meltdown. Oh, OK. Yep, that's that, correct. That happens. Yeah. And uh, what you're doing is uh, you're going to be playing cards into your tableau again where, hey, propagation, I'm going to get one point and then I get to play another trait, such as Spiny. I've got two points now. And then you're going to do that. You go around in turn order. Everyone's going to be playing cards like this, three, and then minus one. That's um, Oh, I don't like minus points. You don't. But the thing is, even though you get minus points, your gene pool goes from five, which you start with, up to seven because it's plus two. So now you can play more cards. Oh, yeah. well, getting to play more cards is definitely a reason to go down in points. I'm exactly. In. Always a good thing. And then when it goes around, that's when you're going to turn over the age card. And that signifies, hey, now we the ice age, and then you're going to do stuff depending on what the ice age says. Okay. And then randomly thrown in here are the, um, it'll, it'll tell you when to uh, stop the round or whatever. I think these are the catastrophe cards, so. This uh, art is fantastic. Isn't it There's great? a little bit of a foil. Yeah. Um, iridescence to it, which is so fun. Yeah. I think that the publisher is just also called Doomlings, from yep. what I see. Yep. Yeah, that, that is uh, them. Um, and then, I mean, the artwork is super cute. You got Blubber, the it's whale. It's adorable. Yeah. It reminds me of Bella's bath toys. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, yeah, that's Doomlings from our friends at Doomlings. Thank them for sending that out here. Awesome. That's yeah. a cool one. A little bit bigger box present than, you know, a can of mints. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but you could totally, like, just. Just take the cards. Yeah, I right? uh, I have. Box. Yeah, I like to put everything into one bigger box. Yep. That um, and then you have to have a good time unpacking that when you get home. But exactly. fit as many boxes. It's like it's like a bag of chips with a bunch of air in it. You know, a lot of game <laughs> boxes have extra room because yes. they were trying to fit that what was the typical you know IKEA Calic shelf size. Ah, Not all yeah. games do that now. Obviously, there's a lot of games that are like, nah, we can fit in a small box, and that is our appeal. Yep. Like these ones. Um, but if they don't, you can squeeze them all into one. Exactly. No box fart for that one, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry box fart fans. Yeah. So we talked about that's not a hat. We talked about doomings. This bag can fit a bunch of stuff. How are we doing on time? Okay, we got time to do a few more here. Yeah. I got to show you this one. This is one of my favorite games of this year. Nar. Nar or Kanar. I don't know. You pronounce oh, the K? I No, I don't think so. Nar, you don't. Hey, here's a little uh, sneak peek at how a streamer does his work. I've got posters. These go on my monitor when I'm streaming so I can remember the rules and whatnot. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Here's the secrets, everybody. Secrets. So this is a scoreboard. Uh, what NAR is, is it's a Viking game, but it's not your typical Viking, you know, stabby stab. It is going out on your ship 
to recruit other Vikings to go trade. You're trading goods and whatnot. I'm just excited about these components. Yeah. They have little places for, I assume, these tokens to go. And yeah, I'm going to place go on them wrong. But I'm going to be happy about it the whole yeah. time. Oh, that's a scoring token. Okay, but, oh, token. There you go. Tokens. Helmet and helmet. Helmet and, and helmet. Bracelets. Oh, I was going to say uh, collar. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's satisfying. So you can see these are tarot-sized cards, beautiful cards. I um, want to thank Panasaurus for sending this over. Yay, these are the different destinations Raina. for going on. Yay, Raina! <laughs> uh, different destinations. So what you do is, ah, look at this. All the different Vikings are going to come out. You play them in uh, the different colors into your tableau. And on your turn, you're either going to recruit Vikings, which means play from your hand into your tableau. Oh, she is sassy. She is so sassy. They're Definitely all some sassy. Sass. Definitely some sass in this game. Either um, place Vikings in your tableau and take those actions. So, for instance, if I did this one here, because they match colors, I will get a bracelet, Becca. <gasps> Congratulations. Thank you. And I will also get an ongoing point, which was on the board, which um, we hit. That's hit a harpsichord, maybe, yeah. possibly. Exactly. And then you can do that, and then when you get enough Vikings in your crew, like, hey, let's all go on a vacation to this destination here. <laughs> Yay, vacation games about vacation. Exactly. And we go here, you trade in these Vikings because they like it so much, they're just going to stay there. Yeah. So they're now off maybe your Maybe burn crew. a little bit, maybe pillage a little bit. <laughs> so now they're, they're off your crew, so now you got to rebuild your Vikings. Uh, but you have this here, which goes on top of your ship. You get those uh, Ooh, assets ash. immediately. Yes. yes. And that's what the bracelets are for. If you have one bracelet, you can get what's in the first column. If you have two bracelets, you get the second column. If you have three bra bracelets, you get all three. Ooh, so as you, okay. yeah, as you uh, continue getting more destinations, look, you're going to get more points. You're going to get more assets and resources and whatnot. It's a really cool engine building game, card hand management game. 30 minutes, 35 minutes at most. Yeah, I'm in. So good, yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite games of this year, Beck. I highly, highly recommend it. Okay. Now, yeah. this is um, probably so far the one that I'm like, I really need to play this. This I, is really, just the components alone. Yeah. I, mean. I think this is the one that you would like the most out of the games that we brought today. This, yeah. It, it's so I mean, they're all winners. Yeah. They're all winners. They here. are. But the ones that you play for other people's enjoyment and the ones you play to win because you want to <laughs> so badly. Oh, and we'll just throw it down. Yeah, get it out of here. Well, get it out of here. We got more. We That's got for three more. After three more cut. games. Three more, more games. games. Three, three more, more games. games. Um, hey, here's a game called the game. Have you I've heard of this? this game. Yeah. Another this, game. Have you played the quick and easy version of the game? No, I don't believe I have. It's my favorite version because it's quick and easy. Ah. Ah, that's what we're here for yeah. on our travel games edition. Yeah, so a 10 minute version of the game uh, where in the game you are trying to cooperatively uh, line up your cards 1 through 10 or 10 through 1 in e ascending or descending order. Um, and it's cooperative, so you're gonna, you know, you have your hand of cards and secretly, or you're going to choose which one to play. So 1 through 10, I'll put like something low, hopefully, and here we'll go do a sample round. So if I did this, a 4. Becca would now have to either play a five or play a, ooh, look at that. And then I can play a six. Uh, and you can go 10 through one on this one. Oh, nine. Nine. And then, yeah, you draw cards, blah, blah, blah. And you're trying to get them all out. Um, and You don't play with half the deck in your hand? You don't. That's just for <laughs> demonstration purposes only, folks. Um, and then um, it, it's tougher than you think because at some point you're going to go, oh, I can't play a card. What am I going to do? And why did Becca put a six there? I only have a four, and I can't go higher than that. So, yeah. Uh, and then it's just all or nothing. You all win or right. lose as a group. Exactly. Um, how do you win? How do you win is uh, there's a certain number of cards you're going to play. Now, I will say this. The one cool thing is if you if I had this here, so this is going one through ten, you have the six. Uh, if you play the same color, then you can bring it back down. So this six now I is a see. three. Yeah. Ah, a little reverse. Yeah, reverse. Yeah, the reverse. That's what it is. Uh huh. Another great one from yeah. Pandasaurus. Of the size is the mind. Yeah. Similarly, you're just uh, tr just trying to count up, but you can't say anything. Yeah. And you have to try and get rid of all the cards in your hand. Yeah, that yeah. one's fun. It's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, but so this is yeah, just one through ten rather than one through a hundred. Uh, so it plays in 10, 15 minutes. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. That's the game. Yeah. Ah, let's see. We got two more that are in the bag and perfect for travel. 
Uh, Deep Sea Adventure from one of my favorite publishers, Oint Games. All their games are like basically in this size box. Yeah, we were showing some of them off last week, I believe. Yeah, we we're, yeah, did we show them? I forget. Um, but. Well, time is in flat circle, I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Deep Sea Adventure, we have a ship. This is a semi cooperative game because what we're doing is trying to go down to the deep depths of the ocean uh, to get treasure. So Ooh. we're gonna line up all these pieces here. We have our little meeples up there and we're gonna roll a dice and move down. Okay, simple enough. But here's the thing, Becca. Anytime someone goes down and grabs a uh, treasure, so let's say I go here, you're here, um, we have this little tracker for the oxygen. We are sharing oxygen. Ooh, I'm a heavy breather. I am sorry too. To so, tell you. <laughs> so sorry. As you take treasures, you're gonna start moving the oxygen down. And at some point, you're gonna have to get back up here by rolling dice. You'd think that a six side die would go one through six. These only go one through three. Oh no! Yeah. So uh, this game is hilarious because every time I teach this game, the first round, everyone dies because we run out of oxygen. Then That's how you know it's a good cooperative game. It's fantastic. Yeah. And then uh, the second and third rounds, people say, oh, I remember now, I'm gonna run out of oxygen, I'm gonna have to start moving up. Because everyone on the first round always tries to go down because the deeper you go down, obviously the treasures are worth more points. Mm, blah, blah, blah. Real plank situation. Yep. People, remember, when you go underwater, you need enough air to get back up. This is just life advice irrelevant of board games or deep sea adventure. Yes, uh, oxygen is a good thing in gameplay and in real life. Yes. So Definitely. that is deep sea adventure from our friends at Oint Games. Uh, this is maybe one I'm most excited to look at because yeah. I love some nice, uh, this next one. This uh, one. Love some nice animal themes. Yeah, uh, again, this is probably one of my top three games of last year. Okay. Namalia. It's card drafting and sort of like tile lane. Oh, yeah, you just you right said there. such exciting words. I had you right there. You had me there. Um, Speaking um, of things I love. Give you, so everyone starts with a hand of like three cards and we are doing different uh, scoring conditions. I'm just, just sort choosing of, random cards, yep. okay. Let's do some choose some random scoring conditions. Oh, they're so pretty. Yeah. So each uh, card has an animal and a terrain on it. And on your turn, you're gonna select one of those to put in your tableau. Okay. Now, just like King Domino, you um, or similar to Kim, King Domino, you are going to be building a tableau six by six. Okay. So on your turn, you select one, just place it there. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. Here's mine. All right, and then we um, draft cards, so we're exchanging our hands okay. with our fellow players, and then you're gonna place one that's gonna cover up one of the squares. Oh no. Or you can in, uh, cover up the entire thing. Okay, and how, what's the placement restriction? Um, it's gonna be six by six, so one, two, three, four, five, six uh, by six. So I can cover, what, uh, oh, I see. You can cover up to one or more. So I'm either trying to get a big river yep. that starts in the bottom left? Uh, no, anywhere. Okay, um, this is doesn't want pandas on the inner four? Uh, the pandas are, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, I think so, we'll go with that. Um, and this is get some green stuff in these positions. Yep, uh, every green section is worth two points. And this one here oh. is whoever has the most lions, uh, I guess three points, Ooh. and so forth. Oh, you found a lion, okay. Yeah. And then what's, uh, what's really cool, Becca, is for round one, we're gonna score these two. We're gonna score the green plus the lions. And then the, in the next round, after we place our cards, we're gonna go score something different. Third round, we're gonna score just something different. Fourth round, we're gonna score three different cards. And the fifth round, we're gonna score these three cards. So I see. Okay, yeah. I've placed another green section. That's my pro strat right nice. there. Nice, okay, and then we do the final one here. Oh man, I just uh, realized I'm on the side of the screen with your stuff and you're on the side of the screen with my stuff. Oh, Mind blown. Yeah, okay. okay. And then your final one, you're just gonna place, uh, let me see. So I'll do that there. Okay, no wider than six, you said. Yep. Oh, gosh. And you can co totally cover up cards as well. Um, and this is a river? River, yeah. Uh -huh. So in my case, I have one, two, I have two rivers connected. Wow, wow. Yeah. I really just covered them up. It's fine. It's because fine. Because you know what I care about? Green, green areas. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so for this first uh, two, um, you're gonna score the green areas. You're gonna get two points. There's a little score track that we haven't taken out yet. I get six, right? Oh, you get six, oh my gosh, yeah. And then you have your lines. I have one line. I have one line. So we tied, uh, we'll call it friendly ties. I'm not sure what the real rule is, so we get each three points. Okay. So then in the next round, now we're gonna score lions and Wait, rivers. is this least lions? Oh, maybe it's least lions. Oh no. Oh no. We well, still tie? 
Hi. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and of course, these are all different scoring conditions. Like this one here would be penguins as long as they're not in the same column. Uh, this one here, we flip it over. Uh, this is whoever has the most uh, gorillas gets five. Whoever has the most pandas loses five. Interesting. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different combinations. In the second round, we draw three more cards, uh, do it again, score these two. Third round, score these two. It's fantastic. The penguins can't stand on each other's shoulders because they're bad at balancing. It makes perfect sense. Is that true? Yeah. They're bad at balancing? Have you seen them wobble around? They just have... A little short legs. Oh yeah, they do have. Yeah, I'm thinking happy feet. They all seem happy and yeah, yeah, yeah. stable. Oh, they can slide on their bellies like nobody's business. That's right. So yeah, that's the Malia, Becca. That is uh, a game that's easy to travel with. I love it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very fun. I um, maybe we save other stuff for future yeah. shows. I I yeah. think. I think that's excellent. I can't wait to pay, play Namalia all the way through. Yeah. It's really. I don't know, I just love uh, some jungle animals, some wildlife. Too. Yeah, yes. this is a fun one. As we kill it in the world with our <laughs> sick human practices, we put it more and more into our games to appreciate it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cheers to uh, that. No, yeah, no, no. yeah. <laughs> uh, not cheers to killing. Yeah. Cheers to appreciating the wildlife. Mm -hmm. Amen. And cheers to you all for hanging out with us um, today. Checking out all the games and travel games and games that are coming to Kickstarter, GameFound, Backerkit, and all the places. All the places. Yeah, our, our cups are empty, so that's yes. uh, the end of the show. But we'll see you guys back next week. If you are not yet subscribed to our newsletter, make sure you click the link in chat or go to bit dot ly slash news gts to get in on our newsletter where we shout out some videos we've been working on other stuff Roll is doing a great job putting that together for us so um to appreciate his work make sure you're subbed other things that you have coming up oh we have a guest host on the yes. show next week because i'm on vacation yeah do you want to announce should we announce it yeah folks one of our favorite people in the world bonzinator is gonna be here next week to join pew, me pew. here pew, pew, pew. and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna talk about all the games we're excited about and show you some new stuff show you some old stuff and uh share photos and whatnot and i will speaking of sharing photos we do have to do one more thing. oh that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. do we have my time? bad yeah, yeah. uh I, there's always time for a shelfie everybody okay folks share your shelfies do this in our discord and this is our friend, uh, actually in my Discord, Linnaeus reached out and said, hey, I've got a couple of shelves full of games. So let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah. Linnaeus Cabal, she's got tons of games. And so many games. I, I really like her collection, Becca, because she she's like me. She's an Omni gamer. She has some heavy stuff. She has some light stuff. She has some stuff in between. Uh, like right here, we've got Furnace right next to uh, Terraform Mars Ares Expedition. Oh, great one. Yeah. Uh, way down over here, we... And Kat says, that looks like a load-bearing game wall. <laughs> yeah, totally right. Indeed. <laughs> uh, there's Sushi Roll, uh, the roll the dice version of Sushi Go. Here's her second shelf. <laughs> All the games. Look at that. All, at the top there, she's got Mechs vs. Minions, a huge game. Uh, Endangered, hor a couple of Horrifieds, and uh, all the things. Uh, is that Dune? Did I just see Dune? I don't know if that's uh... Dune. Or is that Blood on the Clock Tower? I just had to throw those names in because we haven't oh, talked about it. Oh, what? Uh, thank you so much. Dude, Blood on the Clock Tower, what? 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 Dodgers. Dodgers. Yes, Dodgers. How about them Dodgers? Yes. Uh, so, Linnaeus uh, Cabal, thank you for sending in the shelfies. Folks, if you'd like to send in your shelfie, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about all the games, and um, you can join our Discord and uh, share the photos there. Yeah, share what you're interested in, too. We'd love to hear from you there, and we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So, uh, especially if you're watching after the fact, just hit us up, and we're glad you're here. We'll see you next time on Good Morning Society. Bye. Yeah. Bye.